Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to the uh, series on common ocular symptoms. Today we are discussing photophobia versus glare. So first let us see what is meant by photophobia. Photophobia is actually defined as discomfort which is caused by an abnormal sensitivity to the ambient light condition. So here what I want you to remember is that Photophobia pre is present in the presence of ambient light condition. That means under the normal light conditions also, patient is having discomfort with light because of the abnormal sensitivity to the ambient light. So what are the causes of photophobia? Photophobia causes are basically because of the abnormality of two things. Number one is the cornea that is the black part of the eye that you can see over here in this picture. Okay, so if there's any abnormality in the cornea that can cause photophobia. And number two is whenever this problem in the uvea and in particularly the anterior uvea which is formed by the iris and the ciliary body. So at uh, over here let me tell you briefly about the anatomy of uvea. So the uvea is composed of the iris okay and the iris and then it continues with the ciliary body and posteriorly it is the choroid okay. The choroid is a middle layer of the eyeball. Now, uh, whenever there's abnormality in the anterior uveal tract, that means the iris, that is the colored part of the eye and the ciliary body, whenever those get affected and inflamed, that is called uveitis and in that condition, we will have photophobia. So basically, two conditions which are associated with photophobia are corneal abnormality and the second one is anterior uveitis. Now, why does that happen? Basically, whenever the ciliary body gets inflamed, there will be ciliary spasm and that spasm of the ciliary body will cause photophobia that is increased sensitivity to the light. Similarly, whenever the cornea gets affected, as we know cornea is, uh, ha is, uh, is having a very rich nerve supply which is coming from the trigeminal nerve. So those uh, nerve fibers, the stimulation of the nerve fibers will occur and those nerve fibers when they get stimulated, there will be increased increased sensitivity uh, to the photophobia, uh, increased sensitivity to the light which will cause photophobia. So whenever the patient is complaining of photophobia, that means increased sensitivity to the light and discomfort to the light, you have to look for abnormalities in the cornea and in the anterior uveal tract. So you, uh, sometimes there might be foreign bodies in the cornea or the patient might be suffering from anterior uveitis in which case you have to look for KPs and inflammation. Sometimes it could be keratoconjunctivitis secondary to some infection like the adenoviral infection or sometimes they can be posterior uveitis also with uh, that means the inflammation of the posterior uveal tract that is a choroid and in such cases sometimes what happens is the inflammatory cells might get spilled into the anterior tract as well and cause inflammation of the ciliary body as well and there will be KPs present on the cornea so that spillover uveitis can also cause photophobia sometimes and in some patients after putting of the dilatation after instilling the dilatation drops the the pupil gets dilated and such patients also might also complain of uh, photophobia. So let us see a few examples of the photophobia. Now in this person as you can see this is the cornea and you can see a foreign body which is sitting on the cornea. So as I told you corneal pathology will usually cause photophobia so this person is going to definitely get photophobia. Now in the second picture you can see this limbal hypertrophy is present over here. You can see some limbal nodules and again here limbal hypertrophy with congestion and this is a case of allergic keratoconjunctivitis or the vernal keratoconjunctivitis VKC. So this patient also is going to have photophobia. Now in this case you can see a flicton here. This is a case of flictonella keratoconjunctivitis. So definitely as the cornea is involved, the kerato basically in the keratoconjunctivitis means cornea. So as the cornea gets involved, there will be photophobia. Now similarly in this picture, you can see so many KPs, these round uh, inflammatory cell deposits on the cornea, which can be seen in the slit beam and also on the diffuse elimination, you can see those KPs which indicate that the patient is suffering with uveitis and therefore the patient will have photophobia. Now in this picture you can see this is a patient who is having such a big pupil because he's under the influence of drug midriasis. Such a patient can also get photophobia. Now it is very important to differentiate photophobia from glare. Okay, True photophobia must be distinguished from glare and 
where do we see actually glare glare occurs in those condition which will allow excessive light to enter the eye okay now as we know that we have the iris okay and the iris is going to uh, the term it terminates into the central entry or portal into the eyeball which is called the pupil of the eye right so the size of the pupil is going to always regulate the amount of light which enters into the eyeball so if the pupil size is small okay less amount of light is going to enter the eyeball and if the pupil size is bigger then more amount of light is going to enter the eyeball similarly this iris usually consists of a lot of pigments and these pigments are going to reflect excessive light which is entering the eyeball now in some conditions like aniridia what if the iris was absent if the iris is absent what will happen excessive light is going to enter the eyeball and that is going to cause um, glare symptoms now similarly in ocular albinism in patients who do not have melanin pigment or so there's no pigment in the eye then also the the light cannot get reflected back out of the eyeball and the patient will have excessive symptoms because of excessive light which is entering the eyeball now sometimes excessive irregular scattering of the light will occur in the eyeball because of a cataract which is present in the posterior subcapsular region of the lens and such a cataract is called the posterior subcapsular cataract or the p SCO that is posterior subcapsular opacity and such uh, cataract can also cause glare because of excessive scattering of the light so the first picture over here demonstrates the posterior subcapsular opacity and this patient is going to have glare because of the excessive scattering of the light which will occur because of this cataract now the second picture here shows you can see this is the iris here and the iris is actually absent in the other part now since the iris is absent here excessive light is going to enter the eyeball and the patient is going to have symptoms of glare now similarly these two pictures this is the retina of a patient who is albino okay who is not having proper pigmentation in the eyeball similarly you can see the eyelashes are also white and you can see the uh, there would be the pigments are not present in the iris as well and such patients are also going to complain of glare because of excessive light which is entering the eyeball now another entity which is present apart from photophobia and glare is decreased vision in bright light conditions right so such patients uh, will have problem because of the sci uh, because of a central problem in the eyeball whether it is central uh, macular disorder central uh, cataract you know and then in bright light as i explained to you what happens is that the pupil size will become very small and if you have a central opacity whether it is a central cataract or a central uh, dystrophy like this a cone dystrophy like this the rays are going to pass exactly in the center through to these opacities and the patient will have decreased vision in daylight because of a smaller pupil however at night the pupil is going to become larger in uh, size and because of that the light rays will pass through the periphery and those peripheral light rays will actually make vision possible so these are the causes of decreased vision in bright light so they are posterior subcapsular cataract congenital cone dystrophies and central macular disorders so what are some of the systemic causes of photophobia till now we have discussed the local causes of photophobia but there are certain systemic causes as well which can cause irritation of the nerves and they can uh, subsequently cause uh, problems and discomfort in ambient light condition and such conditions are number one migraine we know that migraine is associated with aura so such patients will have photophobia and then meningitis trigeminal neuralgia and cranial disorders like subarachnoid hemorrhage so basically meningitis and arachnoid hemorrhage will cause irritation of the basal meninges and as we know that the optic nerve is also enclosed by the meninges and as the meninges get irritated there might be symptoms of photophobia as well